So in this video, we're going to talk about the confinement factor, typically denoted with a capital gamma. Um, so what is this confinement factor and why do we need it? Well, up till this point, we've been assuming that our gain material is just some block, uh, and it's surrounded perhaps by a couple of mirrors. And so our photons are going to be bouncing around in this cavity, uh, going back and forth from one mirror to the other. Or equivalently, we've got some electric field that's confined within this cavity. But how do we actually make sure that the electric field stays only within this region? Uh, and one of the answers is that you can use a waveguide type structure. So if you've got, uh, let's say that this is our, this is just a rectangular waveguide. Uh, and let's draw the active region. So this, uh, this red region, this is where we have all of our gain. And this outer region uh, is just a lower refractive index material to ensure that our electric field is confined inside this gain region. And then the mirrors are just going to be on the front side and the back side of this, uh, of this structure. So the mirrors would be here and here, for example. And so if we were to draw this in our two-dimensional structure, uh, we now have our gain material and then this other material on the top and the bottom. So let's, uh, let's draw the gain material in red and then this other material in white. And then our mirrors still are just on, on either side of this material. And so if we actually draw the, let's, let's just real quick draw the, three, the full three-dimensional structure of this. This gain material goes all the way through this waveguide structure and to the back uh, and then like so. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, uh, excellent. So we've got some gain material inside of some other material. And this is how we ensure that the electric field is confined to the gain region. But we know that some of the electric field, it's not going to be perfectly confined. Uh, some of the electric field is going to leak out, is going to be contained not just in the gain region, uh, but also outside of the gain region. We typically draw these exponentially decaying tails of electric field uh, outside the cavity. So our profile might look something like, I don't know, that, a sinusoid inside and the decaying exponential outside. And so now we've got a problem because the number of photons inside our cavity, our photons are now confined not just within this gain region, but also some, uh, some region outside it. They're sort of bleeding into this outside material. And so this is how uh, we deal with it just by using this thing called a confinement factor. And uh, my favorite personal definition of the confinement factor is it's just the fraction of photons uh, within the cavity uh, that can interact with the gain material or interacting with gain material. So not all of our photons are going to be able to produce uh, new photons by stimulated emission, for example, because some of our photons are now residing outside of the cavity. And so gamma is a way of accounting for this. So it's just the fraction of photons that are actually able to generate new photons via stimulated emission. Now, if we wanted to be more precise, we know that the number of photons is related to the magnitude squared of the electric field. Uh, and so we could uh, define gamma using an integral. So we can just integrate uh, the total electric field magnitude uh, within the, so let's say that this is uh, within the active region. So we might integrate from uh, here to here, for example, and here to here and here to here. Uh, divided by the magnitude squared of the electric field over the entire cavity. And so this will tell us the fraction of photons that are actually able to produce new photons via stimulated emission. And this also lets us use an electric field profile, which we can actually calculate. Uh, so you can calculate this using simulators, and then you can actually compute uh, gamma. You can compute a, for a given mode within your waveguide, you can compute what gamma actually is. Now you might see gamma written different ways in the literature. So 
uh, one common way of writing it is as the active region volume uh, divided by the optical volume. And this is sort of, I put this in quotations because it's not a real volume, uh, not a real volume. It can only be defined uh, in terms of this integral, which we defined up here. So if you integrate the electric field and divide, by, divide them by each other, then you can sort of get an optical, effective optical volume. Uh, and confusingly, it's also written as uh, the active region volume divided by the total cavity volume. And strictly speaking, uh, this is wrong. So this is straight up wrong. Uh, but it's actually very easy to calculate. So it's very easy to calculate because you have uh, the geometry, presumably, of the device that you're trying to analyze. And you can just calculate with basic geometry uh, the active region volume divided by the cavity volume. And so this is a, a popular first approximation of gamma, but it's not strictly speaking correct. And it's often, uh, often grossly wrong. So intuitively, you can kind of think of gamma as how good you are at convincing photons to be inside your gain material, or as we've just defined above, the fraction of the photons that are interacting with your gain material. So a high confinement factor, for example, like 0.7 or 0.9, uh, or even one, means that all of your photons are within your gain material. Uh, and so you've got very good confinement. Your electric field profile might look something like this, uh, if this is your uh, active region. Whereas if, you're, if gamma is pretty small, so gamma maybe is, for example, uh, like 0.3, then your electric field profile might instead look something like this. So you've got these long tails off to the side outside of your active region. So I'm not a, generally a huge fan of the confinement factor just because it has so many conflicting definitions. Um, but it is it can sometimes make our, our lives easier when we don't want to deal with volumes, but we want to deal with this unitless coefficient gamma. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.